Okay. Um, it's, I think it's funny just that uh, we're take. It seems like we're taking this more seriously this time when really we should have been taking it more seriously the first time years ago because we knew less back then. Um, do you? What are your thoughts on that? Well, I don't know. I mean, I mean. No, I think that the first time I think we were careful. We we tried a couple different ways of doing it. Uh, we did only a very small amount, and I yeah. think that you know I we spent a good five plus years researching it. But I mean, there was only so much that you can right. find out with just but I, research. I still feel bad because I remember that we went deep on your eye that one, the first time. Mm -hmm. And there was no way to know, well, when was too deep. Well, I think it's in inevitable that you're going to have to oh, define right. those limits. Right. right. You know, um, the problem is when people repeat the mistake, not right. people making it the first time. And also that it seemed rather, it seems to me now rather barbaric that uh, the different types of hand pilgrim that I tried on Polly that first time. Like that guy, I remember well, like you the, even were taken aback for a yeah. minute there when I started going at but it. But the thing about the hand poking <laughs> is, is that we've, we've got a hundred you know, a hundred or even a two thousand year track record of people successfully hand poking eyes. Right. So it seemed like so we, we had yeah. to we had to try that method. Even though we yeah. were pretty sure that the injection method was the right one. Yeah. The injection method had never been done before. But but hand poking there was a track record for it. Yeah. But what's interesting to me is that even though there's you know the last hundred years doctors have been doing hand poking after hand poking after hand poking, they keep refining the procedure. They're clearly not happy with it. So that says to me that it's not an ideal procedure. No, it's not. And like, realist, I, I often think about this, like, if, if we could go back, will we still do it? I'm, I don't know. I think like, I, I think that had we not done it that day, there'd probably be no eyeball tattoos right now. I think that's a that's safe assumption. Yeah, and maybe that would be a better thing. Like, if if just one person is completely blind, yeah, then I think that's too high of a price to well, pay. Well, and the big problem is, is like I said, it, it's inevitable that in the learning curve of doing procedures, that that there are going to be mistakes made, like going too deep, going too too shallow, um, and any number of other mistakes yeah. one can make. Um, I think you can excuse. I think you can excuse that happening when you're talking about a single practitioner, you know, that's defining the procedure. Right, that's but first the problem that we have right now is that, you know, so many people want to do this procedure, it's irresistibly exciting. And instead of taking the time, you know, to, to, to learn from the people who've done it before, it's almost like they're reinventing the wheel every time. Right. You know, so, With so, this so clearly so, a record of how to do so it. So every single person is recreating those same errors, yeah. those, those same learning curve errors, rather than, you know, just, just coming for training or coming, yeah. you know, or even just waiting another five years to see which, where this goes. Which would really be no big deal at all. You know, and, and we were talking about this, this earlier, but you know, people go into it and you try and warn them and they say, oh, well, I know, I, I'm confident about this. I feel really good about this. You know, and that, that in and of itself is a worrying statement because if you're aware of the level of risk you're getting yourself involved in here, no sane and intelligent person should feel confident about this. Uh, this is a procedure really ignorant that of everybody sense. should feel yeah. very nervous about. Yeah, definitely. I'm nervous about it every time and after mm -hmm. every time. You know, I'm shocked that anyone isn't. Um, can you can you say why uh, why you want it done? Even though, like, I know we started a long time ago, so it's finishing it. But like, initially, like, what gave you the for for me, it was uh, when I saw you first post a Photoshop version of your eyes. This thought it looked really cool, and it was just so visually striking. It always haunted me until like we finally had it together, and then and th how I remember it is. Um, I, I saw it and then when we went up, I really, really wanted to try it. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing, you know, even in early, early writer's credit photos and so on, I would Photoshop my eyes to be blue. And I think that's because some of my earliest memories are watching science fiction with my father. You know, and, and my memory's not very good, so I, I only have a very small number of memories in my early life. And they're all, you know, watching Star Trek, watching Dune, watching things where either people 
you know, have implant style foreheads or strange looking colored eyes or whatever. So that's always been what's defined the standard of beauty for me rather than sort of the conventional you know, swimsuit illustrated GQ yeah. magazine standard. I like that. That was great. Um, hmm. Well, anything, any other last questions or anything else that you might want to say before we jump in feet first? No, other than I think that if anybody wants to do this, they should realize that it's an experimental procedure. It'll be an experimental procedure for a long time. Even as we figure out the short-term risks, there are still long-term risks that we won't know for 15, 20 years or longer. Yeah. You know, because when you have a tattoo on your skin, you know, you expose it to light and the color changes, you know, it fades, it, it blurs out. You know, all those things are going to happen in your eye as well, but your eye doesn't have the normal mechanisms for dealing with that that your, your skin does. So yeah. We don't know what's going to happen when those changed chemicals are sitting right. trapped inside an eye. Uh, and also, like how we were talking about before, about how the muscles and other pressure issues that could happen over time. That we That's really right. Know. You know, and, and I think that as more and more people are being done, it's becoming clear that there's a great deal of variability in the way bodies respond. Yeah. You know, you could have 99 people be just fine. You know, and then one person swells up for an inexplicable reason, and then that swelling puts pressure on the cilial muscles or the iris sphincter muscles, and you get, get all kinds of vision problems, uh, you know, difficulty dealing with bright lights, yeah. probably night vision issues as well. Yeah. All right, well, all that being said, I guess we're going ahead. Okay. okay. <laughs>